we would know what that means, and again, others would know that as well. So we pray, Father, giving you thanks for opportunity to learn from you, to be ministered by you, to by you, and Father, in turn, to minister to others. And we give you all thanks through Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, battle in the wind again today. I, I was reminded when we were setting up, um, some of you probably don't remember this because you lived pure lives, but um, back when I was a heathen, uh, there was a, somebody at Woodstock, I don't remember who it was, and it was raining if you remember seeing the movies, and he said, maybe if we pray real hard, we can stop the rain. So Neil Young did that at a concert one point in time, but I was thinking if we pray real hard, maybe we can stop the wind today while I'm preaching, so would you do that? Just so it doesn't blow on, it feels good, but it blows on the mic and messes us up here, so. Today we're, we're thinking about hope. And uh, a number of years back, we had a, um, we had a gathering, uh, a friend of mine had a gathering, and, and we would have, us and Starris would have helped out and um, sponsored it, I guess you'd say that, so to speak. And um, one day I was roaming through the room after our, our meeting, and I heard some uh, folks praying with some individuals who showed up, people who were struggling, people who had broken lives and broken families and such. And um, I heard one of the ladies uh, praying with somebody who had come for the first time. And uh, one of the ladies praying said, I, I just know, I, was, I sort of roam around the room to, to help out and oversee. And I heard her say, I, I just know that God's going to bring your husband back and your family back. And I just know things are going to be restored and repaired. And I uh, cringed a bit. That was nice to hear, but the reality was, uh, I don't know that she knew that from the Lord for sure. And I said to her afterwards, I said, I appreciate you trying to offer hope to this young lady. I said, but you're offering something that you don't know that the Lord's going to do. Right. And I asked her that because I didn't jump in. I said, did you hear that from the Lord or anything? She said, no, no, I just wanted to encourage her. I said, we need to be careful. We need to be careful to make promises of things of hope that we aren't sure will come to pass. Right now, people are saying they just know God's going to do this, do that, do the other. And uh, again, when I don't know the folks, I don't jump in there. But if it's people I know, I said, are you sure of that? Because if you are, I want to be on board with that. But if you're not, just be careful that you don't offer that. If we think about the word hope in our modern English language, people say that about a lot of things. I hope this happens. I hope that happens. And really, all they mean is it would be nice if that would happen, right? right. It would be nice if this would happen. It'd be nice... It would be nice if we all could live in peace. But there's no guarantee of that here on this earth. So when we tell people we have hope in the Lord, we want to be sure what it is that we're telling them, what it is we're conveying to them, what it is we're sharing with them. Well, if you look in some Bible dictionaries, it'll say that uh, hope, the hope in the Lord is that uh, something God has promised will come to pass. Something that he has promised will come to pass. That's not very complicated. But so our hope in the Lord needs to be rooted in what he has said will come to pass. We're not going to look at all that today. Most of you here probably know some of those things. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. We know that. I was changed. A lot of us here were changed through Christ. Became a new creation. And we know that those who are his children those who have been welcomed into his family through receiving Jesus Christ, they'll live with him for eternity. We're sure of that. We have hope in that. There's no question of that in my mind. The Bible supports that. The things of God support that. But how he's going to work in each individual's life, life here on earth, we aren't so good to know that for sure. And we need to be very careful not to make promises for God that he hasn't already made and not to give hope. In uh, Scripture 2, one of the, um, uh, if you look it up in a Bible dictionary of hope, it'll say an indication of certainty. My, my hope is in the Lord. It's an indication of those certain things that he will save those who call upon his name and he will take them with him for eternity. But also a strong and confident expectation. Uh, oftentimes when I pray, um, and I, I say it a lot, my wife probably gets tired of hearing it because she's been hearing it now for 15, 20 years but I do it for a reason. I'm around a lot of folks that haven't prayed before and, and don't um, 
don't know what to pray for, don't know how to pray. Not that there's a necessarily a way to and not. Any prayer is good. But if, have you ever, all of you have heard this. We'll, we'll say a prayer and then we'll say, in Jesus' name, amen. You ever wonder why we tag that on at the end? Why do we say, in Jesus' name, amen? Well, um, I'm not a, a huge Star Trek fan, but I've watched it. And uh, in the some of the the uh, later versions, which were garbage, the, or, the original one was the only good one. But some of the later versions, um, Picard, the uh, I think it was the second version. Anyway, he he had a, a an assistant, and uh, his assistant would say something to him, and, and Picard would say, "Make it so." He was telling him, "You have the authority under me to go do this thing." that you know is good for us and that I want you to do. So when we say to the Lord, when we say in a prayer time, in his name, in the name of Jesus, that's God referring to us and saying, make it so. Because he has given us the authority and the certainty that if we come to him through his son, Jesus Christ, he will hear us and he will respond. Does he hear us all the time? I had a talk with a friend. Well, God hears us all the time. You know, if you study the word and as you get to know God, I think there's times he's up there, la, 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 because we're talking <laughs> without any real intention of following through. And I think he knows when we're just trying to pull his leg. And it's as though he's not hearing us. But one of the promises of hope we have is that we, if we come to him in the name of his son, truly, he will hear us and he will respond. We can have an assurance of that and a certainty of that. A couple of things I wanted to look at about hope today. Uh, a couple of points that I've gathered over the years from different materials and uh, something about hope is that it has results. Well, of course it does. Our hope, in other words, our guarantee of the expectation that God, that which God has promised will come to fulfillment. That's what hope is. It isn't just maybe if I get lucky, maybe if I'm good today, maybe if I do everything right today, maybe if the stars line or something, I'm not trying to be silly, but some folks do sort of mix it in. But our hope is that that which he has promised for his children will come to pass. Hope hate changes how we see ourselves. In the second, and, and sorry, in the First Peter two eleven, beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lust, which wage war against the soul. The Bible says, my wife uh, said over the years, she just loves the word sojourners. We are sojourners. We are pilgrims. We sing, uh, mention over the hilltop, I'm just a pilgrim in search of a city. Right? We sing that sometimes, our group. This isn't our home, this earth. No. You might say, gosh, that doesn't sound very helpful. No. But that actually can bring us hope. Because when I realized that my life's work, um, Arthur Williams, my Irish friend who passed away, he said that um, his, uh, his, his goal wasn't uh, job security, but life fulfillment. It wasn't trying to make sure we can make it through another day, although sometimes we'll have those days. But really, it's knowing that we're doing what God has for us to do here on this earth. I, I fear that not, not a lot of people find that, that purpose God has called them for. I would urge you to pray for that so that there, you can have a hope that is real in that. And so we don't find our satisfaction or our fulfillment in just the things here. It could be to raise a family. It doesn't have to be ministry work. I, a lot of folks think God's call must be some sort of missionary work. No. no. My mother uh, raised six kids. That's, that's what she did. That's a big job. Yes. I've never raised any, so I can't attest to that single-handed, but I'm sure that it is. Any of you with kids, one, two, three, four. Yes. She fulfilled her life's purpose in God to raise her six children. Yes. It changes what we value. Hope changes who we are. It's real. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. That's not a, if I get lucky, it'll happen. That's what the word of God says. And I, for one, need that because the old John was not the sort of guy I'd like to be associated with. But the new John, I'm okay with that, mostly. It changes what we value. Help us think about heavenly things versus earthly things. A very familiar verse you'll know from the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6. Do not lay up for yourself treasures upon earth, 
where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in or steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. There's no promise from God that no marriage will ever break up. There's no promise, as I shared with my friend years back, she was promising that this young lady's husband was going to come back as though, as though God's promise is that every relationship will stand forever. That's not there. There's no promise that nobody will get sick. There's pr no promise that nobody will die. I mean, it sounds silly to think that. But sometimes we spend our lives fighting to try to maintain things we have on this earth. And as good as they are and as nice as we need to be and as much as we need to invest our efforts in there, there needs to be our, our spirit thinking towards heavenly things, not ignoring things here on earth. But we can't base our happiness, our satisfaction, our confidence in the Lord based on things, everything working out. I have a friend right now that just really struggling with that. And, and actually, I, I talked to my wife. Actually, I've known her for about 15 years and probably less than six months ago, she's starting to get it in the Lord. The Lord's starting to penetrate. We've been meeting off and on for about 15, well, 12 to 15 years anyway. It's been a long time. She said, you know, I'm realizing that this isn't all that it is. And that's just a simple statement, but I said, amen. Now, I, I, for, for her to say that to me means she's hearing that from the Lord. I could say that to her. This isn't all that it is, but it just kind of went in one ear and out the other. Now it's settling in, and she's hearing that from the Lord. Biblical hope is never an escape from reality. There's not a promise that we won't be hurt, injured. I think last week or the week before I mentioned, uh, I don't have foul language, but I have sometimes colorful language. I, I say to my friends, if you're not willing to get crapped on, don't get into ministry. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just the way it is. But that really applies to so many things, right? It's not unique to ministry. Right. If you don't, yeah, if you don't want to get dumped on, don't walk out your door. Right. right? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But, but God doesn't promise that we won't get hurt. We won't get dumped on. So we need to shift our focus to say, Lord, what can I see in here? What's, what can come of this? Is it just this sinful world and people in this sinful world causing me to struggle and have difficulty? It's not always God trying to teach us something. No. I, was, uh, I was at a workshop in September last year in North Carolina, and I've mentioned this a few times. Larry Crabb, I read from him quite a bit. I went for a week and was sequestered with uh, 30 other folks to go through this intense training. And uh, he said, we live in a fallen, crappy world, and bad things happen. I think, wow, that's a, that's a downer. Devil tries to get in anywhere. Yeah, but that's the reality. God's promise is not that everything will work out fine. It'll all be good. But what he does promise is he will give us strength yes. and fortitude to stand up in the middle of those things yes. and to do what it takes Amen. to leave them, to stand up through them, to learn something and do something about Amen. it. That's a hope we have, without question. We're living in the Bible. People say it's the end of the world. It's not right. the end of the world. God said he'd yep. come back to make everything anew. He will. He'll be back one day. That's a hope we have. It has rewards and blessings, um, our hope. It gives us joy and peace when we hope in the Lord. At least it should. Yes. I heard uh, the same man, Larry Crabb, years ago said, uh, he gave the definition of joy, and it really struck me. I would say it to some folks, and, huh, okay, but it really hit me. And he said uh, the definition of joy that he likes to think about is knowing the one you're with is glad to be with you. Think about that. Mm -hmm. If you're here today, do you know that God is glad to be with you? Yes, sir. And are you glad to be with him? Yes, sir. Well, John, if you knew the stuff I did last night or last week, it doesn't matter. No. He's glad to be with you. The hope we have is real his joy our joy in him and his joy in us isn't contingent upon our performance and we're all sinners jesus died for us a record yep. for our sins yep it's not contingent upon us or else none of us would be able to look him in the eye or look at him but we can through jesus christ it gives us protection psalm 33 18 behold the eye of the lord is on those who fear him on those who hope for his loving kindness 
uh, there's a, I forget the psalm now, it might be, it's in Psalm 119, but there's about 600 verses in there, so I'm not sure which one. But uh, Psalm 119, uh, uh, David says that he is the apple of God's eye. You've all heard that term before, the apple of your eye. Do you know what that is? The apple of the eye is when, you, when you're looking at someone and you can see a reflection of your face in the color of their eye. That's, for, that's, what's, that's what is the apple of the eye. It's as though you're in there as part of them. So when, when we say, somebody says to us, we are the apple of their eye, it's a term of great, deep endearment. Yes. And Amen. David said that. And that's part of what we have with the Lord, the hope we have. Yes. We are the apple of his eye. We are reflected in his eye. He is reflected, should be reflected in ours. When people see us, they should see the glory and presence of the Lord. Gives us strength. Hope gives us strength and courage. Yes. Psalm 31, 24 says, be strong. Let your heart take courage, all you who hope in the Lord. I heard uh, courage defined once as uh, courage is the ability, really, the ability to stand up in the middle of a storm. I mean, that's not hard to see. Well, not, I just, I like to have pictures. To be able to stand firm in the middle of whatever's going on. Doesn't mean you won't get hurt. Doesn't mean you not, might not get damaged, but it means you stand firm. Walk through that fire. Yep. Gives us endurance and comfort in the face of death. Paul said to the Thessalonians, we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep. It's an odd word to use for dead, but that's what, uh, he uses the word asleep. It's used in the New Testament quite a bit for dead. So we can replace that. I do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are dead, that you may not grieve as the rest who have no hope. When my friend Arthur Williams passed away last year, it was hard to watch and it was difficult to see. We weren't there. We, I saw him in December. He passed away a few months later. But um, his wife, when we talked to her, it was just great joy in her heart because she knew he was with the Lord. No question. He said to her a few weeks before he died, he said, I'm done. My life's work is done. Difficult, yes. yet hopeful. Where do we get hope? We'll finish with a few thoughts on that. Well, there are warnings in the Bible. We'll not look at those today. But there are warnings not to offer a false hope. There are warnings not to look for temporal things. To really bring it down to a base human level, truth, truly, my well-being can't be contingent upon my wife Peggy's love and approval for me. I want that, and I have that, and she has mine. But it can't be solely based on that. She knows that. We know that. We talked about that years ago. We were talking with a pastor for some counsel. That's hard to admit to one somebody that we're gonna fail them. They know it, I mean, we do it. That's part of when I speak to folks at weddings and in marriages, just remind them of that, not trying to cast a downer on the event, but just say, look, you can't put your hope and trust in each other fully because things will happen. Yes. We put it in the Lord and keep it in him. Proverbs 24, 14 says this, know that wisdom is thus for your soul. If you find it, then there will be a future. Wisdom is what? The ability to get knowledge and do something with it. Your hope will not be cut off. Without God's wisdom, which gives God's hope, your hope will be in the wrong thing and it will be cut off. That's Proverbs 24, 14. Well, God is called the God of hope the source of all real hope. If we are going to have hope, again, when you hear the word hope, think confident expectation. Confident expectation. My hope is in the Lord. I'm confident that that which he promised, he will fulfill. That's what hope means. Yes, amen. Amen. It must amen. come from he who has the power to give it and he alone. We're not going to sing it today. In the early days of contemporary Christian music, there was a song, My Hope 
is in you, Lord, my strength. Right? I think I, I'm thinking that song as I'm uh, uh, thinking about this. But, you know, as we sing that or any song with that, as we sang the song Fly this morning, if I were on eagle's wings to fly, fly to the ends of all the earth. It's David talking in Psalm 32, Psalm 139, Psalm 51. Those are his three main psalms of reflection in the Lord particularly. Psalm 139, if I go to the darkest depths, you're there with me. If I go to the highest of highs, you're there with me. The Lord's there. It's a hope. Psalm 62, 5 says, My soul, wait in silence for God only, for my hope is from him. Learning to wait on the Lord in silence. Arthur Williams said, uh, I'm going to ask the musicians to come up. We're going to sing a few songs to close. But Arthur Williams, he said that if uh, in his early days of Christianity, if you were to um, have a, if his house had a, had a glass window in front, and you would have seen him walking back and forth like this, and you would have said, there's a mighty man of God praying and just communing with his heavenly father. And he said, you'd have been totally fooled. He said, what he was doing was saying, God, you need to do this. And God, you need to do that. God, you need to do the other. And he said, he never stopped to hear from God at all. He was telling God everything that God needed to be doing rather than talking to his heavenly father and then listening in silence for God to speak to him. So I hope this morning you can have, if you hadn't already, you can have a little better understanding of hope. And you might say to yourself, hope, confident expectation, hope, confident expectation. God's promises will come to pass because he has told us that they will. Not because I'm saying it, or a pastor somewhere, or a, a leader. We're just saying, they're just saying what God has said, but he has said that. God tells no lies. So I hope, you hear that? I have confident expectation that you all, all of us, will maybe think differently, see ourselves a little differently, maybe even see the circumstances in this world right now. This isn't the first time the world has been in this kind of place. It's not the last time it will be, unless the Lord comes back real soon. The world has been in a crisis type situation before throughout history He's here. and it will again. Amen. So we stand firm in it, yes. not guaranteeing that it'll go away if we pray, but guaranteeing that we'll see it differently, guaranteeing we can stand up in the middle of it and guaranteeing that we can offer that very hope to others who need it.